All right, we're here. We got some great young Americans, guys. Let's go, San Jose State, guys. Come on, tap in. People on the bleed. Let's go, baby. You don't want to miss it. Take the lead. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Tell Bryson, we're listening to the song. Okay. Yeah, we're to tell Bryson what's up. Greg, why you gotta turn every kid gay? What yeah. is wrong with the world today? <laughs> yeah. I hope we don't play. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Prime Time with Alejandro Stein. And we got a great show for you this evening. We have the one, the only, no femur kid on to talk about his boxing victory this past weekend. And we have the most famous crypto trader in the game right now, Nikki NFT, coming on the show to give us his, his tips on how to get community noted and actually make it to the top. So we got a great episode for you this evening. But we got to get into the nitty gritty of what's really going on. Do you guys see what's going on with this freaking Boeing suicide, guys? Let's play a little... Uh, uh, do we have any we don't we don't have any clip but we have a bunch of full screens um, yeah i got this okay so this just, is the uh, pull up full screen one just to start us full i made screen. notes i tried to be a good producer today okay what's this guy's name john barnett john barnett this guy if you look at him he's basically a badass i mean he's a uh aerospace or not aerospace but is an airplane engineer so obviously he's not some dummy he's got a look at that shirt look at that shirt that is swagged out dude anybody unironically wearing a shirt like that is a badass not a guy that would kill himself I, I can just tell you something when you get that shirt at tommy bahama you're not allowed to kill yourself if you shop at tommy bahama you don't kill yourself that's i mean if you're wearing thomas bahama the one of the the best leisure brand there is this guy's thinking of pina coladas. He's not thinking of shotgun shells to the brain. So when we talk about Mr. Barnett, there's a lot of weird inconsistencies to his suicide that make you go, hmm, what? why would he do that? So the first one, Barnett was planning to start driving from SC to LA, South Carolina. Where SC? Southern Carolina. Yeah, South Carolina. South Carolina to LA after completing his testimony on Friday. But that same night, the Boeing lawyers, they asked him to stay another day for his depositions. And conveniently enough, that same night, he got a gun and he blew his brains out. Allegedly. Allegedly. And we want to say, you know, also, we talk about the subject, Jimmy. We probably should have had a little team meeting. I don't know how much we can use the word suicide on YouTube. Well, let's just say unalived. Unalived. Okay. Unalived himself. But this smells like Hillary Clinton is all over this. I mean, I'm not saying it's her, but I'm sure she probably used one of the same cartel hitmen that they're using. And you, if you don't think Boeing has, uh, you know, Boeing is what? One of the biggest military industrial complex companies that there is in the world. So you don't think they have some freaking shooters around? Trust me, they do. I know. So let's go. In a go. video game. In a video game. This is all in Minecraft. And uh, yeah, for any censorship, we're talking about Call of Duty right now. So, John Barnett, he made a grim prediction before his death. He told his friends that if I die, it's not suicide. So, doesn't that make you think a guy saying, hey, if I die, I didn't kill myself, and you're investigating arguably one of America's biggest companies? I don't know where they are in the Fortune 500, but what is Boeing? I mean, isn't it one of the top companies, Jimmy? Oh, yeah, and they get a lot of military contracts from the government. So basically, they're funded by the most powerful government in the world. 
And we know that the American government would never, ever do anything never, nefarious. Never. That's not the, the United States government follows all rules and regulations, and they would never do anything deceitful or sketchy or mm -hmm. off color. Mm -hmm. Now, me, I would. Everybody mm -hmm. knows I would do something sketchy, right? I'm sketchy, but the U.S. government, it's not sketchy. Is that correct, Jimmy? That is absolutely 100% correct. Our military and government have never done anything wrong. We are the moral superpowers. So... Why aren't more people talking about this? I don't know why this isn't the front page. I mean, all we want to do is talk about Kate Middleton. Well, and well, Kate Middleton is is probably not alive. Did well, you see they tried to show her? Now they're debunking that? <laughs> I have seen that. But before before we get too off topic, I want to go to these the last two points that are just crazy. So they when they found his body, he was still holding the gun in his right hand. Now, if you unalive yourself in the face, how can you still have a tight grip on the gun? That's just... Seems a little sketchy. I Can know. you explain that to me? Well, that's what they do is they shoot you and then they put your finger on the trigger. But also what's weird about it is he was left-handed. Oh. I that's... just made that up. Okay. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had me. And then we don't have a graphic for this other fact, but they said that in the hotel room, all this stuff was packed up. Now, if you were going to unalive yourself in the face, would you bother packing up all your stuff? Would you worry about chores? No, and dude, like I said, it, it all goes back to Thomas Bahama. It all goes back to Thomas mm -hmm. Bahama. If you're on a national TV show and you're being interviewed and you go to your closet and you pick a Tommy Bahama shirt to wear, you have no worries. You're mm -hmm. living a carefree lifestyle. This guy's like Jimmy Buffett living Margaritaville, all right? So uh, Margaritaville, you're not going to kill yourself in Margaritaville. Well, it's kind of like the jet ski. I've never seen anyone looking sad on a jet ski. I've never seen anyone looking sad in a Tommy Bahama. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy was like cheeseburger in paradise, and we don't have a clip of this, but supposedly I think the last thing he ordered at the hotel before he died, he supposedly ate a, a quesadilla and like a Coca-Cola. Come on, your last meal is going to be a quesadilla? I mean, they are delicious. Don't get me wrong for all the quesadilla heads. I know there's a lot of dia heads in the chat, but... That's going to be your last meal? No way. He would. This guy probably would have a huge steak, a big prime rib with a bunch of garlic aioli and a bunch of mashed potatoes and, you know, butterscotch ice cream or something. Like, this guy's not going to eat a little dinky quesadilla and then just go boop. Uh, so what do like, you guys... Like what? Boop. Okay. Boop. That's a video game. Boop. Boop. Don't worry about yeah. it. We don't want to really actually... And guys, we're very anti-suicide, so we don't um, we don't condone that. We're very against that. Mm -hmm. um, there's some content creators that Jimmy, did you know that a lot of the gender ideology that's happening uh, currently is a lot of doctors are threatening parents and saying that if your kid doesn't change their sex, they're going to commit. Well, I did you know that? Yeah, I have heard that, which doesn't exist in any other part of medicine. I know, but we know that that is. Listen, if the if the uh, we don't want to say anything medically on this show because that's uh, you know the uh, you can get in a lot. We, of we trouble. love transgender children. We on this love show. transgender children. Jazz Jennings. Jazz Jennings. Oh, what's going on with Jazz Jennings? They're pretty hefty now, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, she she's a big dude now. No, it's a big, she, big lady. Excuse it's a me. big excuse lady. Me, Big lady Jimmy, with Jimmy, you're gonna bleep that out. Jimmy, go back and bleep that out. Do we have a dump button I'm on sorry. this show? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, now we gotta get into pay the bills. Folks. Ah! You see this? This is cash brew coffee. It gets me freaking jacked up. Are you tired? You wake up in the morning. Oh, I'm tired. I don't wanna go to work. I don't wanna pay my bills. Drink some of this, bitch ass! Have your ass zoom in. I had six cups before the show, and I feel great. I feel awesome. And you know what you can do? Guys, I get this. This is what I like to do. I like to get a little cash brew and do a little nummy like this. Mmm. 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 Uh, extra caffeine makes you feel good because it's born of a desire for a bold coffee and a need to build companies that support American values. Cash brew coffee provides an alternative to the faceless corporate ecosystem and fosters a parallel economy that supports freedom. Try my own personal blend right here. Primetime Steins, full time grind. It's a dark roast, 100% organic. I don't know. It's 100% organic ground coffee with two times the amount of caffeine. It's the strongest coffee known to man. Now I'm really zooming. Does my teeth look nasty, Jimmy? No, it looks great. However, this coffee should be drank, dog. 
in moderation because too much of this can cause extensive diarrhea. Why would you put that in there, Jimmy? Just finish, just finish it. It could cause extensive diarrhea. I did this on purpose, and while I look great with my shirt off, my anal fissures took weeks to heal. Jimmy, why would you put my personal <laughs> medical history well, in? Well, it said, it said to include a personal anecdote, and you showed up late, so I just put that story in. So if you, it, it won't cause you anal fissures. So uh, if you guys want to get some, does it look, does it look good on my teeth, Jimmy? Does it? Oh, it looks awesome. I feel like I look like a Western, you know, in a Western. Like I'm about to rob a, a train. Give me all your money. Billy the Kid. All right. Just visit <laughs> Casper.com, promo code PRIMETIME, to save 10% off your purchase. That's Casper.com, promo code PRIMETIME. Drink your coffee or wrongly. Okay, now my mouth is disgusting, Jimmy. What am I going to spit into? I, look at there. Look at there. Mmm. Mmm. Just, just lick your teeth for a while. Oh, man. Now, don't spit. That's even grosser. I'm not going to spit. Ugh. Very good, though. So you don't even have to brew it. You just put a little in your mouth. Chase it with a little, a little chase it with a little water. I can feel the caffeine. My face is numb, but I can feel the caffeine. Is our guest ready? He is ready, and I put the wrong name. He he prefers NFT Nick, not Nick. Is it Nick NFT or NFT Nick? NFT Nick. Our next guest, guys, is the most popular crypto bro on the internet. He tells his followers to choose rich, and he's at war with Twitter's community notes. Please welcome on the one, the only, NFT Nick. Welcome to the show, my man. Thanks for having me. Nick, do you drink coffee? Yeah, and I rub it all over my teeth. Because you choose That's rich. That's the correct way to drink coffee, by the way, is you're supposed to just shove ground coffee directly in your mouth. And it just goes directly in. Like, that's the best way. I also hear it doesn't uh, uh, give you uh, stomach issues as a result <laughs> if you uh, just gr shove it in your mouth. Yeah, no anal fissures either. We want to make that very clear. I just had that because of my poor diet. I had a trip to Mexico. Okay, Nick, you're super viral. I love your style because I like this uh, style where you, like, bait people into that can't even, like, tell a joke. And your war with community notes is brilliant. So I guess tell tell me like how did you how did you come up with that was it just an accident when you're on that boat or like how did you become NFT Nick? Well, I always was NFT Nick for the past few years because I actually was active in crypto. We have a crypto entertainment company which is both content and then we also sell NFTs. Um, but uh, we were on a team offsite and decided to rent a yacht basically uh, for an activity as a group. Essentially, we had a couple of drinks. We were hanging out on it and uh, I thought it was a great opportunity to just I posted a selfie photo and people thought it was funny and started kind of talking crap. And then after like a beer, I was like, oh, I got a better idea. We're going to shoot a video and uh and just be like, yo, look at us. Like, look how successful we are. <laughs> and, and people got just, they were just furious about it. I, I, people don't like crypto people. They also don't like people that are on yachts. These, these are like two things that just turn out to infuriate individuals. Well, and I'm not even trying to name drop, but the same guy that owns Casper Coffee, Tim Pool, I go on his yacht multiple times in Miami. It's a very, it's a team building exercise. We go on there, we hang out, we talk. There's no better place because you're on the boat. So you have business ideas, you have fun ideas, you know, it's business pleasure. It's a good time. So all the haters are going to hate, but see, Nick, you and I are on boats all the time. We're on planes, we're on jets. You know, these people, they don't know our lifestyle. So the haters are going to hate. That's the thing, you know? And that's what I learned. So, so you've been able to monetize your haters Tell me about that. I mean, I know crypto's through the roof right now. So are you on like double cloud nine because crypto's high as a kite and you're, you know, viral like uh, HIV? Well, it ta it tanked today. So honestly, uh, I'm what down. What did it go to like today? What did, what did it drop to today? dollars something like that. But um, it, well, it depends on which one you're looking at. Uh, I own a lot of Solana and Solana went from 210 all the way down to 167. So that's a pretty big oh. uh, uh, drop. That said, it's all good. Uh, like, I'm not actually concerned about it. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're, crypto is booming. Um, the way that we make money, we have sponsors, and then we also sell our NFTs, which generate more uh, more Solana for us, basically. 
And so we've just been holding on to a lot of it. And as the price has gone up, uh, our bank account goes up essentially. Well, I saw, um, so well, we make. Well, one, sorry, sorry, Nick. I saw some scamming because I'm. I have crypto. I got about like I got like seven thousand bucks, and I got Ethereum, and I got some other coins. Some you know, I don't even touch it. My goal is like I'm just gonna see what it is in twenty years. Hopefully, it's like worth a hundred grand or something. I don't know, but. I saw some scam, and you can tell me about this, where it was like one of these stupid, you know, TikTok videos where it's like, what, what people are doing is they'll, they'll go and they'll create an NFT and they'll buy it from themselves for like a one Bitcoin, right? For like $30,000 or something. And then they're able to, it looks like they spent $30,000 and they can sell it to somebody else for half the price. And then they can get the $30,000 that they sold to themselves and plus the $15,000 that they sell to the new person. So are there a lot of like, how do you s separate yourself from all those like crypto scammers and all that stuff? Because you know that does exist. You know what I'm saying? Like, have you ever heard of that one, uh, Nick, where they sell the NFT to themselves? Yeah, I mean, fraud exists. Yeah. Fraud also exists in the real world as well. Of course, well. yeah. Uh, so. with, with, with art. So like if you go buy a painting, they may call it a Picasso and it's not. Um, you need, I mean... Uh, th there's there's ways of determining trusted sources for where there's stuff that's actually like legitimate. Um, in our case, we have, you know, like a sort of um, we have a collection which people end up purchasing and they're well aware of uh, what that is. And so uh, they're able to identify, oh, this is the real one. That's not the fake one. But people do like pretend to be me and send DMs to people and say, hey, uh, work with me, send me money. And so that sort of stuff happens, but that's also just the internet. And I think ultimately people have to become um, sort of smart as to navigating what's real and what's not. It is challenging and they always come up with new ideas, but that's, that's always been around on the internet, not just, uh, not just yeah, and I just say the crypto space. I know, trust me, my grandmother lost a million dollars to a Nigerian scammer. Um, so I know what it's my like. My mom lost money to a scammer as well who had her send money to someone in Texas, basically. Uh, anyways, it was an internet scam. She ended up getting the money back, and Homeland Security actually sent, uh, sent her the, the money, which is pretty crazy. Okay, what about this? I'm a conspiracy theorist. Uh, are they going to put us on a central digital currency, the government that's going to own it, and then if we're going to all be under the government's rule one day? They do say the C, I don't know that that's a conspiracy theory. The CDBCs are something which uh, supposedly are going to become adopted by a lot of the different uh, governments. Look, it's a more effective way to track the flow of money. So that that's just a better thing. That's also why the existing crypto space, things like Bitcoin actually make a ton of sense is because if you're like, hey, screw the institutions, you have an option for something where you can actually be your own bank. And that's kind of the thesis that exists around all of the crypto space. There's an ideological bent to it. There's a bunch of other things associated with it. But fundamentally, that's the whole purpose was saying after uh, Wall Street kind of uh, no one went to jail or anything else after the financial collapse and financial crisis, Bitcoin got a lot of attention because they said, hey, fuck those guys. The government's not there to protect me, apparently. So. I want to I want to protect myself and I want to self custody my own assets in a way that's reliable and safe. And that's what created essentially the movement for Bitcoin. There is all sorts of things that it tends to have a more libertarian mm -hmm. uh, slant to, I would say, a lot of the, the ideological things. But um, I mean, the longer that you're in it, the longer that it makes sense and the longer that the government keeps taking our money and not doing the things that we want, the more that you're like, yeah, I guess this actually does kind of make sense. Well, and, and this is the, I guess this is my only thing, and Nick, I love you. I'm going to say this. I love your content. But this, this is my only anti-crypto thing is that it kind of sucks because the more crypto you have, the more you want the regular currency to fail, right? I mean, wouldn't that be the best thing for crypto if, if the dollar just plummeted? Well, it wouldn't be good for anybody if, like, look, I, I'm not as extreme with that position. I have uh, my, my business partner I used to get into debates with about Bitcoin all the time. I said, if you're so aggressive on Bitcoin— you're betting on the dollar going down and collapsing, basically. And the reality is if we had societal collapse, you still need the Internet to function. And I think the Internet is based on a lot of our core infrastructure, like private organizations and corporations, which are actually running things. So you still need AT&T. You still need Verizon. You need to be able to pay your phone bill to be able to access these things. You need to have access to the Internet in order to spend it. So I, I don't 
fully believe, I don't fully buy into it. Um, also Bitcoin and everything else does tend to correlate with a lot of, uh, like the stock market. It's a high beta asset. So we haven't actually seen a decoupling. Everyone's it, there's an argument that Bitcoin's arguing for the dollar to go away, but so far it just literally does not make any sense because Bitcoin seems to actually correspond with as the S and P goes up, Bitcoin goes up in price. It just happens to go up even more so. So as of right now, it actually tends to be more correlated than it is separate. Okay, and then so tell me this. Obviously, there's you know different cryptocurrencies, but don't a lot of them kind of rely on the success of Bitcoin? Or I guess that's kind of what gives us the impression that it's doing well. Don't you think Bitcoin's going to go up in an election year? That's what I've been reading. Is that you know through 2024, it's probably going to potentially hit 75,000. Do you think that's possible? Uh, it just did, basically. Oh, is it so at 75 it, now? I thought it was at like 68. It, it, I didn't even check uh, it, it, it I think it'll hit 150 this year. Um, it's it's uh, It just dropped, though, to 62 from 75. It's a volatile asset. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but 150, yeah, I, a lot of people be rich. Speaking of rich, one of the original crypto kings, he's kind of a secret crypto king, a guy by the name of Sam Hyde. Do you know who Sam Hyde is? No. Oh my gosh, Brandon! He's arguably one of like the coolest content creators. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you up. He he uh, saw that you're coming on my show. Him and Jet Neptune they do a show called Fish Tank, where it's a show where it's like 24 seven live streamed. It's really the biggest independent reality show in the world. And they wanted me to reach out to you. They like they want you to be the star of their season three is coming up. So I got to pitch you this. I'll pitch you this off camera, but you got to look up Sam Hyde. But the reason why Sam Hyde has uh, he was successful, has a huge gum road, has a huge following. He makes money, but supposedly he was an early adopter of crypto. Is that's one of his you know big conspiracies of why he's financially lucrative. So do you know a lot of people that bought in at crypto four or five years ago at 8,000, 5,000 or not really? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, well, it depends on which one you're talking about. My average buy is 13,000, but I bought Bitcoin at a hundred dollars first. And then, uh, I bought Ethereum at $9 and then I sold it for like a 50% or a hundred percent gain. It was like, I'm a genius. And then it just like continued to skyrocket. And I'm like, well, that was the dumbest thing I ever did. I just sold uh, a business. I could have just plowed a hundred grand in there and then like walked away and now, now be completely uh, fully retired. But, um, I didn't, uh, I, I own, I own a significant amount of it. So, uh, that that's, um, to a degree that's borderline unreasonable. Well, and we got to react to some stuff, but the reason why Bitcoin is also valuable, there's only 21 million coins. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, people like scarcity. Yeah, of course. I think that's why that's why it's always going to go up if there's only 21 million. And that's why we have other coins. That's why there's necessary to have other coins, too. Okay, so, Jimmy, what are we reacting to first with Nick? So we're going to start with the video that sparked this whole war with Community Notes. Oh, yeah, so okay. that and then the follow-up tweets. Okay, let's play the original vid. Good morning, haters. I'm in my Lamborghini heading back from my Malibu surf session to my Bel Air mansion that the haters will say ain't real. Anyways, I got a lot to catch you up on, but for now, stay away from those haters and choose rich. See, I love that, Nick. And what happened once you said that? Obviously not a Lamborghini. What did these idiots at Community Notes do? I mean, they basically noted it. They'd been noting all the other videos about like how much my bottle of champagne was, how much, uh, no, I did not own the movie theater that I was in. What's ridiculous is it's not like I'm like, spreading like uh, false information that's gonna like really impact anybody in any significant way. The crazy thing is I'm gonna get demonetized for posting these videos. I got 150 million impressions on it. Elon Musk owes me $5,000 for these, but now I won't get it. But I don't think it would have gone viral had it not been for these notes. No, so. the, the notes is what made it go viral, but say that again, wait, you had 150 million impressions, but you're not monetized on Twitter? I am monetized, but if you get community noted, they demonetize those tweets. No, I didn't know that because, listen, I had 25 million impressions and they sent me $112. I'm like, what the hell? But so, you, yeah. and you did hundreds of millions. And because it's community noted, it's not monetizable? Yes, yeah, bullshit. That's the biggest bullshit I've ever seen. Okay, real quick, Nick. We have a boxing icon. I know you probably can't see him. This is Ricardo, a.k.a. No Femur Kid. We're getting him mic'd up. 
This guy is a boxing legend. Ricardo, you made it. Welcome to the show. He's a little late. So we had a little miscommunication, but I just wanted to introduce him because this is another legend. Okay, so Jimmy, what's the next uh, clip we're going to react to? Well, it's his community notes from the helicopter. Oh, yes. And I like this one. Okay, let's play this. Yeah. Uh, our so it's just, it just a tw tweet like, oh, look, check out my sick helicopter. And the community note said this, uh, full screen eight. Like, sure. Uh, Oh, it, this, it said it wasn't your helicopter, and then you said it's attacking rich people. Community notes says community notes aren't used to attack rich people. <laughs> they are used to debunk and demonetize false posts and provide context. So I thought it was funny that they had to clarify you're not this, being attacked. It's like weaponized community notes, though. Like, it's actually kind of ridiculous. It, it's uh, – well, I've stopped getting community noted, even though like I'll like throw lies in there just to see like whether or not people respond to it. And I've they've stopped community noting me. I assume that's because it's uh, maybe they realized there was satire involved with the content that I was making. So they just now figured it out that it's satire. I mean, what a bunch of freaking uh, idiots. I mean, how could they not tell? But what is it? But what are you? My favorite things when you say you live in a what is that peer duet? What is it called that you live in? Pied a terre. Pied a terre. I can't even say that. What is a pied a terre? What is that? <laughs> what is that? It's, it's an apartment that you have in a city, but it's not your main residence. So like uh, <laughs> someone who's who lives in Paris may have a pied-à-terre in New York City that they go to for a couple months out of the year, for example. Um, so, yeah, th I'm actually in my pied-à-terre right now. Well, you're a badass. And tell us uh, how uh, – I love this Choose Rich. Explain what was the behind that. Like, you know, did, you, did that just kind of come to you naturally? Like, why, why did you start using this slogan? Um, we – we ended up uh, in a house where they had it, the theme of the house was the Wolf of Wall Street. And basically, uh, there's a quote from the movie, which essentially says uh, where, where he's talking about, uh, I've been poor and I've been rich, but I much prefer being rich. I choose rich every time, basically, or something like that. And so written on the wall was this neon thing that said, I choose rich every time. So I made a video after everybody was like dunking on me on the boat video where they had no understanding of what I was talking about in the video because it was all very like crypto specific uh, stuff. I then went, walked around the house and I said, yo, this is my house. I worked my ass off for it. Yo, that was they saying that's not my yacht, even though I bought that yacht and I worked hard for that yacht. And then then I was like, it was a mindset. And I point to the sign and I'm like, it's because that truth's rich every time. And then I just walk and, and I'm like, so what are you going to do? So I walk off and people were like, yo, I choose rich. And I, so I, then I just leaned into it, basically. And then, OK, so tell us now uh, the real question everybody wants to know. Is how have the ladies I know, as you know, some people are hating on you, but there has to be some ladies in the DMs now. Right. I mean, have you uh, I have uh, received I actually have received some DMs um, in terms of uh, dating. I. Well, I was already dating. So I actually just broken up with somebody right, right before this. Right before you went viral, did she call you back after this? Like, hey, Nick. Uh, yeah. No. Um, mm. I, but I mean, she, my success was inevitable, you know? So I think she, like, that's why she was with me in the first place. See, she was choosing rich. Like, she had the, she had the rich mindset. She was a little too focused on the money side of things. But um, the bottom line was, yes, that, ha that has continued. Um, I will say also, I just like meeting people in person and there's been like, it, look, there's nothing bigger of a confidence boost than when you're crushing it. So I'll say uh, people can tell your energy just from that. Well, so it, it, yeah, oh, oh sorry, sorry to cut off, but uh, you, you talk about the ladies wanting you. I wanted to show this photo. Um, you're on a yacht. Total sausage fest. You know how hard oh. it is to throw a yacht party and have no chicks show up? So I'm going to have to question these allegations of women in your DMs. That wasn't a yacht party. That was literally my team that we had <laughs> flown down to Miami. There were five of us, actually. One of the guys is out of there. Just for us to sit there and talk about business, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't bring a bunch of chicks onto uh, an event where we're sitting there brainstorming and spitballing. So your girlfriend goes to another school is what hey, you're saying? No, shut up, Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, tell him a what age. school? A, no, Jimmy, tell him how old you were when you lost your virginity, Jimmy. I was 29. Uh, but uh, that's when I got married. 
I like. He's a 29 year old virgin. That's not a joke, Nick. That's not a joke. He he saved himself for marriage. But when I went on a yacht, what's well, funny? You talk about no present. hoes, Jimmy. You didn't have a hoe for 30 years of your life. <laughs> I was, if I had a yacht, I would be present with the ladies, and I wouldn't post about it. This is who you're competing against. I don't know, Jimmy. I don't know. You went 30 years without a hoe. Dude, I, I didn't go 16. I, I think basically he represents the type of commenter that was responding, that was like, <laughs> that, that essentially was like, yo, this guy gets no chicks. Yo, whatever. Like, basically... It, it was, it represented the cohort. It was guys who were like play video games all day. Definitely do not like have any sort of uh, like an active romantic life, basically that were basically coming after me because for a moment they felt there was somebody that they could look up to and say, despite this guy's quote material success, I'm still more successful than this guy. Like there's no way that this guy's getting any ladies like there's no way that that guy is whatever like uh actually like money can't buy happiness or or like can't get you uh uh women basically and the reality is it does it does like, no it, it, it would it would just be a shame if you ever posted photographic evidence of that just of what of what of the ladies jimmy he's not a virgin you need me to take pictures with women I, well, I thought you just okay. Maybe I misinterpreted what you said. I thought you just said it does produce like hanging out with women. Are you just talking about the material success? We're talking about the haters. Are like oh, just oh the, haters, the haters. I'm, the haters. I'm saying the haters are basically virgins in their basement who are playing video games and never get laid. And I was a poster boy for somebody that they were able to attack mm -hmm. to basically say. That guy may have all the money in the world, but he's still ugly and gets no chicks, <laughs> which is basically like middle school, like banter, basically, where I'm sitting down there having an argument and someone's coming at you on the playground being like, yo, you may be successful, but you never been laid basically is what the person's saying, even and, though they haven't that, been laid, even though they haven't been laid, yeah. but that's basically their own vulnerability coming out in their comments that they're sharing is they're emotionally reacting to the picture. Well, hey. Nick, we actually do have a video where I, there is video evidence of you hanging out with women in this next video. It, it, it's the choose rich video in Venice beach. Okay. Let's play it. It's Good morning, cool. oh, yeah. haters. I'm here in Venice beach to find out how I've transformed the lives of all of these people who've adopted the choose rich lifestyle. Let's go have a conversation. You're that guy that got exposed. Huh? <laughs> he got exposed. What's up, man? Dude, how you doing? How's it going? How's it going? Bro, Look at that lady. You all over Twitter, bro. What's up, man? What's up, man? How you doing? Only to talk for two seconds? You want to talk for two seconds? Sure. Simple question. When did you start following? Probably 10 seconds in the future. Oh, you're going to follow me in the future? Ooh. I like that. That's adopting the Choose Rich mentality. I don't follow you. I just see you under the community notes. That's just disrespectful. <laughs> Would you say that you adopt the Choose Rich lifestyle every day? Um, yes. Would you say that I choose rich every time? I definitely adopted it. Would you say that I was part of that inspiration? You're telling me you haven't heard of me? No. So you, would you say that you're not adopting the choose rich lifestyle or would you choose poor? I would definitely choose rich. There we go. Okay, you're chosen rich. I'll give you $20. I'm gonna give you 20 bucks. Here's $20. Actually? Yeah. Oh, snap. All right. Fuck the haters. I choose rich. Ain't no surprise that 100% of people in Venice, California knew exactly who I was and decided to adopt the choose rich lifestyle. Remember, choose rich. I'll see you in the next video. Can I get a, a picture with you? Yeah. Tell my friends. That's gonna cost you $20. Iconic. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know if that video demonstrates my sexual prowess, but uh, the bottom line is it does demonstrate that I was capable of communicating with women in a public environment, which literally none of the commenters have any capacity to do. <laughs> so I guess that's what you were, why you pointed that out. Boom, no, roasted. No, Jimmy. it was Boom, sick. You just got roasted. No, Jimmy. it was sick. Those you girls got... you talked to were hot. It was awesome. Oh. See, that's that's literally the that's, that's, that's I know uh, Jimmy, you're literally like the annoying guy commenting. Jimmy went to Princeton, he thinks he's so smart. He also believes like he believes 9-11 was exactly how the government said. Jimmy is uh, uh he doesn't believe in okay, before we let you go, conspiracy theories. Was 9-11 an inside job, Nick? I'm gonna say no, I don't think so. Damn it. Was the moon landing real or fake? I'm gonna go with real. Oh my God! All okay. right, Nick. I like him. All right, him. see now Jimmy likes you. Okay, um, you know about this one because you're not gonna, you're going to tell the honest truth. You've heard about the ice wall. Is the Earth flat or round? 
I mean, are we really having a conversation yeah. about that? Yeah, I mean, we I, are. I, I mean, I, it's definitely Flat. round. No, how do you figure? Are you kidding, dude? Can you explain to me? You've flown in a plane. Yeah, I fly in planes all the time, in private jets all the time, yeah. <laughs> okay, With so chicks. explain to me how you're still holding that that uh, that basis. Like, how do you even... Are, are, you're just catering planes to your audience, flat right? Earth. Planes work on a flat Earth. As a matter of fact... You could go hey, all the no, way no, no. around the Earth. As, as a matter of fact, it's funny how you say planes, and this is how we know it's flat. This is why, because you've flown a lot. When you fly from New York to L.A., did you know that it's longer than when you fly from L.A. to New York? Did you know that? Yeah, because of the jet stream. Okay, but which direction does the Earth spin? Uh, the rotation would be probably, it depends on which pole you're looking at, if basically. You're in, okay, just say, if you're in Texas, which but way does it spin? But I would go spin? east to west. Yes, exactly right. We spin towards New York City. That's why, they get, that's why it gets darker earlier. So my point is- No, no, is, no, no, no. That, that's not what I said. I said east to west. So you would have, New York would go towards L.A. The Earth spins east. The Earth spins towards. If you're in Texas, the Earth is spinning. Oh yeah, you're you're right. You're right. You're right. Yes. I know that, but my point is, if you're on a plane and you're flying from New York to Los Angeles and the Earth is spinning underneath you, is what they tell us. Why is that flight longer than when you go with the? It's it's counterproductive. Let's say it should be the opposite. It should be shorter to fly the different directions. You see what I'm saying? It should be no. That's that's called that's called uh, gravity is actually no. pulls you. So if what are you talking about? It's not dude. If you were to sling a ball around your head, the further out you go, the faster that it goes. Correct? Like the further that you're from the the distance, because it has to go faster in order to get uh, around. Gravity Balls. as you're driving gives you actual momentum as well. Balls. So the further things that are out, as the wind is spinning, the further out you go, the faster that it has to spin to keep up. False. Um, okay. Community note us. Community note. Community note us. Um, I'm gonna okay. Community note your ass. <laughs> okay. Community note me. Okay. Uh, now we have one more video before we let you go. What is this, Jimmy? All right. It's it's hot. All right. Let's play it. Rich people, we love to hate them because they're just so oh cool God. and good. Nudity it's not wanted. fair. Take ex user and infamous crypto bro at all neck who went viral over the weekend after posting. Last night, Taylor Tomlinson decided to go on national television to ask me out on a date. Well, Taylor, as much as you love for that to happen, you will not share in my Benoit in my LA mansion. You will not sip from this 300 year old bottle of fine wine. And most importantly, you will not be going out on a date with this bachelor. My roses are reserved for women who choose rich. That's art, Nick. I call that art. Thank you. All right. Well, tell the people before you go, where can they find you and how can they support you? Just go to Twitter slash uh, all Nick. Twitter.com slash all Nick is the username. Um, feel free to check out the content, share it, quote it, comment, whatever you want. Um, we'll be on there. We're creating more content. Uh, and uh, I'll be posting stuff from our uh, company account as well. And when crypto blows up, you and I, we're going to Antarctica, and we're going to go to the ice wall. We're going to go climb the ice wall together. You down? Uh, is, is this supposed to prove some, if it's some part of flat earth agenda, then mm -hmm. I don't know. Yes, but, uh, flat earth agenda, because there's no independent exploration below the 60 second parallel. Did you know that? Um, I didn't. Dude, what? <laughs> I mean, I like it's. It's clear you're an entertainer as well. So I mean, we're both uh, we're we're both on the same wavelength as it applies to that. You can't even you can't say it with a straight face. I can say it with a straight face. There's no independent exploration <laughs> below the 60 second parallel. Okay, but you're out here smirking, dude. I don't yeah, even. Because you you made me laugh, think, Nick. You made me laugh. Okay, we got to get to know Femur kid. You believe what you're saying, dude? <laughs> it's flat, dude. It's flat, man. Everybody knows that, dude. <laughs> Everybody knows it. Ricardo knows it. Okay, Nick, you're the man. We got to get to our next guest. Thank you, Nick. Everybody go follow him and support him. All right. Finally, what the heck? What's up? What's up? What the heck? My Ricardo. bad, my bad. <laughs> okay. For the people that don't know, guys, No Femur Kid's got a huge YouTube channel, over 130,000 subscribers. He's got an incredible Instagram page. But not only is he an internet icon, an ex-college football player, ex-high school football player, great athlete, but he's also a badass boxer. Let's play a clip of No Femur's fight this weekend.
Look at that. So, so how did you find this guy, uh, Ricardo? I found him online. He did, he did a fight uh, somewhere on some different. On a, had to hit the Shadur on him. This is Shadur Sanders yeah. showing the Rolex. I found him and he was talking hell of shit all for the longest and he beat my ass and that he knocked me out and then I mean he, he, he couldn't last one round. After that sequence, that's the first sequence in the first 30 seconds, he was gassed in the 30 seconds. I'm like, dude, you can't fucking compete with me. No, he didn't. You had the yeah, and way more others. stamina. You had way more stamina, dude, because yeah. I've been at your last two fights. You're, and then when you fought Baby Draco, you killed Baby Draco. Yeah. And yeah. then, but this guy, dude, you guys were pretty even at the beginning a little bit, but dude, he had no gas. Yeah, I, I know. I mean, I, I came out really flat, and uh, but I was re I was ready to make it up the next the next round or next. We had it scheduled for eight rounds. I was ready to to keep it going. I was like, okay, you know, I came out in the first, not too the best I wanted to, but I was ready for more. Yeah. I mean, I I it's not like I was in there just fucking like getting my ass beat. Like I was in there and I was fighting. I was just trying to figure him out. I came out really flat that night for sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, I was I was ready to fight more, and unfortunately, he wasn't. But, uh, I mean, I want, I want to put on a show. Yeah, and, and see, this is why I love you so much, uh, No Femur, is because I love underdogs. And I think you're, like, the ultimate underdog, but you don't act like an underdog. But I'm saying the fact that you played high school football with yeah. No Femur. So tell yeah. me, what was that like? I mean, uh, did they look at you like you're crazy and say, hey, you can't come here? And yeah, play? I mean, it was, it was uh, I know if I, the coach was trying to convince me to be, like, the film guy. Yeah. And I said, I just was like, no, I'm not, I'm not here to do some film stuff. I'm here to play football. And, uh, you know, I did in the summer workouts. So we had workouts at 6 a.m. all summer long. And I was only one of the four guys on the team to be there all every single workout all summer long. So it's just one of the tests to just myself. You know, I, if I pursue something, I'm not going to do it halfway. I'm going to do it fully. And I have just uh, always love pushing my body to those limits. You know, despite what God's gave me, he's given me so much more than anyone, in my opinion. Um, even though it can be looked as less, I want to use its full potential. And, and I'm just so happy that I found a sport like boxing able to compete and because in football was great but I wasn't able to be on the field I wasn't able to you know to get a lot of playing time you know I played in two games my senior year but I wasn't able to be out there playing you know 100% of the snaps like I wanted to like I wish I could have but now that I found boxing I'm able to compete fully the way I want to and beat the shot some guys too and so now that I see your boxing, I had a boxing match, and I accidentally, it was so stupid. It was, I heard about, I, I kind of read about this. I, I, I read your Wikipedia for a bit. You gotta explain yeah, I that. I threw hot dogs. So I had a, <laughs> I, I had a promotion with Misfits Boxing, you know, and that's why I want to try to get you on Misfits, uh, because I'm good friends with Keemstar, and that's a huge boxing promotion. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And th that's, that's, I think, I mean, just look at, I mean, shit, we're, we're doing better than, I know we're doing better than other, you know, there's Rough and Rowdy, like right now, I've, we're just doing better than those. Our fight numbers. Rough and Rowdy's what? Barstool, Jimmy? Yeah, they're Barstool. Yeah, Barstool. Yeah. Well, we could get I mean, Barstool. You know, I stormed Barstool, so Dave Portnoy doesn't like me very much. And that's fine with me. I'm, I'm, I, I think what they do when they're, with their boxing stuff is a little bit weird. I don't like how they, in the middle of rounds, they have girls shaking ass and stuff, and they do one-minute rounds. It's kind of lame to me. You know, I want to I want to do my best to, to promote boxing, and we do three-minute rounds. We don't have half-naked girls in our rings. You know, we, we I feel like we do it the right way. We do professional boxing. We want to do it professionally. Because even though we are people with disabilities, um, I want to show that that's just a part of us. But we can also do things professionally too. So that's why. Uh, so I'm, I'm cool. If you want to hit on Barstool, so Riff and Rowdy, I'm, I'm fine with okay, that. Okay, let's hate on him. I'm, I'm cool with that. Let's okay, see, but, let's hate on them. But Ricardo was even better than your even boxing. I mean, he's good. But dude, you're hilarious. This is one of my <laughs> favorite videos where you're trolling Cowboys fans as an Eagle fan. But I had to ask you, are you actually a Cowboys fan, I'm guessing? I grew up a Cowboys fan, but I kind of grew out of it. Uh, growing up, I just kind of just started... Uh, just f playing more like fantasy football, so kind of like all sports. And I feel like if you're going to let a team's win or loss affect your whole entire fucking week and whole entire day, then you got to have something messed up in here. I know. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it's it's just, all mad. I mean, like, you don't even know the people playing. The people, the people that are playing don't give a fuck about you. If they saw you in the street, they probably wouldn't even agree to take a picture with you, you know? So so I, I, just, I just don't really follow sports too much like I used to. I know Cowboys fans are one of the most, like, craziest sports fans. They're really diehard. So I was like, oh, my God, what a great opportunity is to mess with these Cowboys fans and dress up as an Eagles fan and piss you guys off. No, that was awesome. I love that clip. Okay, so, Jimmy, are we going to play the first clip of the Baylor football team? Yeah, so go to uh, – so this yeah. – so, so Baylor, I saw in, in this video – Can I make the NFL? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is so funny. I love, I love doing stuff like this because it's just such like – I know I'm going to get engagement, so I asked that question in the beginning. And obviously, like, obviously not. No one's like, you know, guy without yeah. with the NFL. So what I do sometimes is like, I'll post like a video of me catching football. I'll be like, can you guard me? And people are so dumb. They think like, they're gonna comment. No, I can, I can guard you. I can guard you. Or, you want me to the NFL? No, 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 you want me to the NFL? But in my head, I'm like, dude, I'm getting so much engagement. I don't give a, I don't, I don't care at all. Yeah. Okay. Something's wrong with your mic. We gotta, yeah, uh, give you the handheld. Um, 
No, but what's going on though with this bait content, because the guy we just had on, he kind of does that too. That's like the best thing because these haters on the internet, uh, you know, they're just so lame. So tell us, like, yeah. what kind of internet hate do you get? I mean, I, I mean, she, my, my girlfriend can tell you, we, we, it just so much for no reason. I mean, we just, I mean, I, I don't even look at it sometimes, but sometimes the funniest one, I, I love the funny ones, but the, fun, the ones that are, you aren't even like that kind of mean. I mean, one, one I remember forever is someone goes, comments, you ain't shit. And that was the funniest thing ever to me. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know. I mean, I recently we get hate in boxing because I beat up guys that are smaller than me. And uh, I mean, I mean, they're bigger than me. I mean, they, I mean, they have, the thing about, the thing about people that I fight is that they're little people, but they have a femur bone. They have a thigh bone. So they have a, that torque motion when they hit, when they can punch. Me, I'm like on six figure legs. So any boxer, any athlete knows that when you're, when you're, you know, when you're performing, it's from the bottom up. Like you got to find that motion. And I've had to teach myself that motion. I kind of had to teach my, I've trained my core that way. And people want to say reach and whatnot, but like at the end of the day, they have that motion. They're really just bum, 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 flex, you know, yeah, no, motion, they motion. Do have more range of motion, but tell me, why don't you have like a scooter or a cart? Why do you walk? I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, I just you know, God gave me to walk, and I want to use as much space as I'm I can. I'm lazy, dude. If I were you, I'd be on a freaking. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, like, I got a scooter. Scooter. I got a scooter right there. Yeah, that's my scooter, dude. I'm overweight. I'm trying to relax, dude. I, mean, I think I think every time I'll, I'll try to turn it down, but I mean, I mean, I'm not like always on my feet all day. You know, I only kind of, I kind of pace it out. You know, if I know I'm gonna be training for a good hour and a half, two hours, I know that. I'll just kind of be chilling in the bed all day or chilling on the couch. And I'm so mad that we didn't bring Lila. So Lila, one of our you know co-hosts on the show, she has spina bifida, and okay, she's cool. but she's awesome. She's a great comedian. You know, she's really funny. She's a you know good podcast. And I guess you know kind of goes back to like the you know underdog. Like you could have, you could be a victim. A lot of people, I think, in this world, would be like, oh well, I was born different, and you could lay it down and quote unquote quit. But what motivates you not to be like that and not to play a victim? I just have such a purpose to just compete a lot of things in my life and whether that's with boxing now or you know in the future i want to do an iron man i did a marathon before um you did a 23 mile marathon yeah 26.2 mile marathon 26, is that how my much fucking name alex come on now that's what it is 26.2 miles yeah we took 14 hours we did that wow we started at 4 a.m then official 6 p.m we just i mean I, I said i wasn't i wasn't stopping i said I'd, i would i would have you know I, I said to quote my boxing i'm gonna either die in that ring and beat me and that did a marathon i was either gonna die on that track or finish that race so, I mean, I would have just kept going. It would take 14 hours, and we just, I, we toughed it out, and uh, and it was, so yeah, so I mean, the goal one day is to be an Iron Man, but that might, that's going to take a different mentality. I got to kind of train for that. And I know you got to swim in that. Swim in that, too. You got to bike in that. Um, Do you bike? Can you bike? I have, I have a uh, hand cycle bike. Oh, I see, so yeah. It's, uh, so, I just bike with my arms, and. That'll be fun. I don't know when I'll do that. Um, hopefully, I'm definitely going to do it before I die, because that's something I've always wanted to do. You know, I want to climb a huge mountain one day. I just want to do a lot of things, and I just, you know, I can't let, despite me having no femurs, stop me from doing those things. And, uh, But, yeah, I guess I just want to be great. And you said something the first time we met when I saw your boxing match. You go, Alex Stein, did you storm the Capitol? Uh, no, you said, you said, what are we going to do tonight? And I said, I stormed the Capitol. I'm storm the Capitol. <laughs> that was so funny. Okay, so what do you think about that? You know, a lot of people, you look at my Wikipedia, they're going to say, oh, he's some right, alt-right wing guy, which I'm not. My Wikipedia is written by freaks. Uh, but where are you politically? I, well, I, I, read your, I read your Wikipedia, and I just thought you were just like, you just like messing with politicians. So it's like, I know, I mess it's with kinda, both It's kind of like, yeah, you mess with both sides, exactly. Yeah. So I just felt like if, if uh, it's like, I feel like I could go, I could have gone that route if I just wanted to continue these. Uh, I, mean, I, I also do these videos like this where we mess, where we mess with like certain fans and stuff. What would we do this in the future? But uh, it's just, I feel like you're just having fun. You're just like, you're just like pissing people off and it's just fun to do. You know, it's not really, and it's, it's kind of like, it's the people who react that kind of should be kind of put down. Not really you. You know, you shouldn't let, you know, the way this video started was all I said was, I was wearing a Carson Wentz jersey, and I go up to this guy wearing a Dak jersey, and I said, hey, this jersey's worth more than your jersey. That's it. Not even, like, anything bad. I didn't say F you. I didn't say you're and the And he threatens to beat you he up. He threatens to beat me up, and that's the whole thing. And that really wants my channel. And there's so many more of the things. I mean, there's, there's a time where uh, I messed with this gangster guy, and I said, uh, your neck is green. And the next, you know, he's, like, trying to, like, jump through a fence to beat my ass. Like, it's just so funny. Like, and it's really the people that react that should be, get, it should be hated on, not the people who are, like, kind of doing it. And besides, I mean, I say it, I say it in good, I say it like out of good, like it's just funny, like, oh hey, you're next screen, like that shouldn't, 
I don't know. I, they get pissed. Yeah, they get really but pissed. Jimmy, I want to bring Ricardo. I want to bring Ricardo to D.C. and you know go to some of these politicians. If I, if he, it'd be so funny. It'd be so. Have good. a great time. Wouldn't that be so? Have a great funny time. To troll oh, some poli politician because Dan Crenshaw would get so mad at No Femur or AOC. I went viral because I called her a big booty Latina. If you called her a big booty Latina, she would start crying. <laughs> well, I, I, I read the Wikipedia, but I think I saw that a, a while ago, and I was like, I remember, I remember someone do that to her, and I don't know, just. I just think you're a goofball, man. I am a goofball, but you like big booty Latinas, right? I'm a girlfriend, white girl. That's what I'm saying. Nobody. Oh my God, we like big booty white girls too. Like <laughs> Actually, Alex, I have a follow-up question on that. Um, what's that? What's that on your neck? Yeah, like I said, you know, I just won a boxing match about four days ago. Oh, a boxing match. Put the hickeys on it. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent hickey. Zoom in on that. Nate, get the cam. Get the cam. <laughs> show this. Wow, dude, think about all the. You know what's funny, Jimmy? Jimmy's got a full femur and he's never even had a hickey. Wow. Um, uh, my girlfriend was very proud of me. So. Ricardo slammed. She's over, the she's over there. We'll put the camera on it. She's right there. Yeah, show her, Buster. <laughs> Look at that, Busted. <laughs> Busted, Jimmy. Wow, how did you? You notice that Ricardo, you're a freak. Dude. <laughs> what the heck? You won that boxing match and then you just got laid? That wow. We we have a great time. We, she's uh, very loving. Jimmy wouldn't know about loving. Okay, well I have. I don't know. I don't know. I know, but I have never heard it. I'm gonna be that guy at the through the feds. Okay, we're gonna get canceled. We're gonna get this question, but now I have to ask. No, we gotta ask. We have to ask. Everything about you is normal size, except for your femurs. Yeah. Everything's normal size, including everything. Show the girlfriend. Is everything normal size? Yeah. Everything's normal size. You're the kind of so, I mean, I, you have to say, I mean, you know, a lot of people could say, hey, you know, um, I have femurs, but they have a little wiener. You got a big wiener. No we go. yeah, we're I think I'd rather have the big wiener, right, Jimmy? <laughs> I don't know, Jimmy. I have, have no idea. You have a small wiener, right, Jimmy? Uh, yes, and that's improv. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk about my small wiener. Okay, let's talk about it. Um, you have it made depression, a baby. anxiety. It still choose made a baby. rich. She made a girl baby. Yeah, choose rich. She made a girl baby. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when are you gonna when are you gonna get married? When are you gonna have a baby, Ricardo? Hopefully, I mean we. I mean I've always wanted to be a dad, and she's. Uh, I met someone who wants to be a mother, so I think it's great. Um, whenever God wants to bless us with kids and. Bless me. How old are you? I mean, you don't have to say. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm young. I mean, I'm 23. Oh I'm yeah, like, you got plenty. But, of but I've always, I mean, I've always wanted to be a dad. I mean, my, my, my biggest dream has always been the father. And, and, and uh, you know, I, I bring this up, but I don't want to get too sad, but I know you recently lost your mother. I yeah. lost my mom going on two years. It was really hard. And uh, I was in there, too, when I, you know, watching her pass away. Or, yeah. you know. So tell us, like, you know, is that what you used to motivate you? And how was your mom? How did she impact your life? You know, I think, um, I think you know, my, mom, my mom's just going to be, she would always want me to just continue living my life, um, continue to do great things, and she wouldn't want me to let her uh, death, you know, hurt me. Um, she obviously is really proud of you. I mean, yeah, no, I think she she always was really proud of me, and she always will be. Did she ever say, "Hey, Ricardo, don't play football. That's dangerous." No, she was uh, she was actually very um, very uh, encouraging of like all my physical stuff. So she was never really uh, scared about that at all. And then this is a legendary picture. So this is you at the Baylor spring game. It's at it's at the Baylor bowl game, uh, Texas bowl. Um, I was able to suit up. I was able to dress out, and it was a it was an awesome time. But. Uh, in my second year, I chose not to dress out because I I didn't want to just be a poster. I wanted to you know train, and I wasn't training at the time. They they were allowing me to dress up, and at the time I was okay with that. But um, I was like, I'm not dressing out anymore. I'm not trying to be all this poster. I'm trying to be all this mascot. And I just said, I'm not. But I but I was I am grateful to be able to dress out. I mean, it's it, it's, I, it's still I, a cool it's honor. Super fucking cool. It's awesome. Yeah. It's a blessing. Um, well, you felt like they were almost using you as a mascot. Uh, I didn't want to. I didn't want to just. I didn't want to you know go all week not working out with the players and uh, not working on my teammates. And then I get to do the cool thing on Saturday, which is dress out. I didn't want to do that. So what would you do during the practice? Like you wouldn't at least. I would just, I mean, I would be there. I just kind of stand around. On the sideline based yeah. like a trainer almost. Yeah, basically. Making. Yeah. Like a, like kind of like a, I would say a water boy, but like. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. yeah like, I didn't, have, I didn't have, you I was, help out. Yeah. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't holding water, but technically I was, I wasn't, you know, in pads ready. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't able to run this gash at the end, which I wanted to do. I wasn't able to do anything that I, I thought I was able to do, but, uh, I mean, that's a longer, longer story. That is a longer story, but you had beef, right? You you didn't like the way they treated you, and that's why you left Baylor. You know, I just I just don't think um, I like the way things were handled. But I mean, 
at the end of the day, I was blessed to go to Baylor. Yeah, you must be pretty smart. How'd you get in, right? Yeah, I, I, I got in. Uh, honestly, it's so fucking crazy, but I got in for football. Oh, because really? I've been crazy. A guy without femurs. I mean, I had bad grades. I'm not. I'm like. I'm not. But I don't think I'd get in. I don't think I'd get in on my own like grades and stuff and like SAT. Definitely not SAT. Um, but but they're just kind of like you know you apply. You know, get football you in. will get you in. Yeah. So they kind of were using you as a mascot a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know, I'll never know the true story, but uh, now, now I'm my own mascot. I got my own thing going. So I know, and that's a I really mean, cool experience. Like, I, I think like you can't really be. You can be a little mad, you know, because maybe they didn't treat you with the respect that you deserve. But the fact that they did give you that attention. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I mean, I was able to enjoy college. I was able to. Enjoy, I was there for uh, basically two years. We ended with COVID, but uh, I mean, I had a great time. I, one of my friends who was on the team. I was just a, uh, I was just one of the groomsmen at his wedding. So I mean, I, I had a lot of good relations there, and um, you had a lot of fun. Did you get wasted? I got a lot. Of, I got was, I got really drunk back in Baylor. At Waco, I mean, and I'm guessing, is it? Do you get drunk easier or get drunk? Because like, no, I definitely get drunk easier. I don't, okay. I don't drink so much anymore. I think my drinking days are like gone. Good. Like, I mean, I think it just got out of me, and then even then, I just don't like the way it feels. Like my body the next day, and I'm like, I feel like trash. But we'll get trashed one day, you and me. I, yeah, we're going to get really trashed. I, I, I only get several drunk days out of the year, so we're gonna we'll do, get one together. We're going to go do some fentanyl together. You ever do a little fentanyl? No. No, 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 not at try all. Try it. It's really, really fun. Alex is a crazy guy. No, I'm kidding. Do not try it. It's very dangerous and deadly. Okay. Hey, uh, Ricardo, can I have a, ask a genuine question? Yes. Yeah. To educate myself. So thoughts on the M word. Is it a slur or is I actually wanted to do a, uh, actually a video idea. So, so for some reason, like a lot of like uh, black YouTubers, they do this idea where they g go around and they give people like N-word passes. Yeah. And like they get to see if, like if they get. I've seen those videos. That's yeah, pretty yeah. funny. So I think I'm gonna do. I, I I don't consider myself a little person. Or, like I like a dwarf or midget or whatever. I mean, I was born without femurs, and I don't know. Because uh, you're not. A yeah, dwarf. yeah. You know. Yeah, so, your legs and I mean, it's just your legs are smaller, but your arms and body yeah, are normal. Yeah. Um. So that's why I was. So um. As far as the N-word, I mean, if people like. If, the people who are dwarves and they don't want like it or they like it, I think it's just accepting. Some people, some black people don't like the N-word, some white people don't like certain words, some Mexican people don't like certain words. I think it's all preference. But speaking of, but besides that, I want to do a video where I go to people and I give them like M-word passes and like kind of get them to say it. <laughs> so kind of like a spin on what all the black YouTubers people are doing. I, I feel like that would do, do well too. So do, do you give us M-word passes? Hey man, if say what you want to say. It's, life is life. Are you get a pass, Jimmy? Are you going to say it? Say it. Say it. Midget! <laughs> oh gosh, I feel like such a bad boy. I didn't even hear you. What did you say, Jimmy? Midget. I'd rather just choose rich. It's okay. Yeah, choose rich. <laughs> Thank you. God, you're so much funnier. You should be the producer of this show, dude. Ricardo, you're so much funnier than Jimmy. It's just, <laughs> it's un. And dude, NFT Nick was funnier than you, Jimmy. Dude, NFT Nick was funny. I mean, yeah, he's hilarious. Him ah. partying with all the bros on the yacht. No evidence of women there. Jimmy, you act like you've <laughs> never been on a boat with a bunch of bros before, just bro and You're down. right. I literally have never been. <laughs> like, if I every time I've been on a yacht, there have been lots of very good okay, looking here, women this there. This is how I can prove you're gay. Jimmy, how many showers <laughs> did you take with other men while you played football at Princeton? <laughs> <laughs> like an individual stalls? Zero, but we had a big open shower system. That's so. what I'm saying. Yeah. The big open shower, how many times did you shower with other naked men? Oh, I. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is a weird framing of the question. Answer it. How, four years, how many showers do you think you took with other naked <laughs> well, men? Well, let's see. Every workout, you know, two a day, six days a week, uh, uh, three, four hundred. So you've taken hundreds of showers with naked men. Yeah. And you're making fun of NFT Nick. Gay. Yes. Gay. I didn't say Not he that was there's gay. anything wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Okay, now we got to do rapid fire questions. Ricardo, 9 11, inside job. I think that there's a lot of conspiracies out there. I think everything is fake. Me too! Everything is fake. Everything is fake. There's, oh, no, what about, nothing, what, there's nothing real. What about the moon? Is it real or fake? Everything's fake, man. Everything, Flat Earth. Everything's fake. This is CGI. I have femurs, actually. When I go off camera, I have, I have femurs. This is all CGI. <laughs> so, every, everything's fake. Everything is fake. No, but on a serious note, they do lie. You have to admit that the government. Oh, I mean, I think, I think you would take everything as. I mean, if someone tells you something and you just believe it, that's just on you. Yeah. You know, you shouldn't believe everything that someone tells you, regardless of whether it's from uh, the government or from Alex Stein. Yeah, don't believe, anything. don't believe anything I say. That's a fact, because I am a joking around. Well, last thing, though, are you vaccinated? No, not vaccinated. Jimmy, dude, this guy's a bigger badass than you, man.
But the vaccine is safe and effective. It is safe and effective. We love it. Jimmy we love Dr. got Fauci. three of them, and it is very mm-hmm. safe and effective. We love the Fauci. Mm-hmm. Fauci I got sticky. extras. Yeah, Jimmy just was like, I want a buffet of vaccines. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is Alex, I'm vaccinated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm triple vaccinated. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Ricardo, you showed up a little late. My bad. I'd love to come again if y'all would have me. Yes, we'll have you again for sure, but I just can't believe you showed up late. I was so excited. I was telling everybody, I was like, we got no femur, kid. We got this. So, J- Jimmy, before we end the show, the freestyle finale, come out here. We got to do a football drill. All right. Oklahoma drill. Oklahoma. <laughs> yes, Oklahoma drill. Jimmy, hurry. Run over here. Brandon, captain the ship. Okay, where's the football, Jimmy? What did you do with it? Right here. Okay, bring the football now. Ricardo, I want you to freaking lay this guy out. Um, I haven't played football in a very long time. No, but you can leave the mic there. You're good. You just leave okay. it there. If you break it, it's fine. I break it every time. Okay, typical Oklahoma drill. You guys would be facing off, but since we don't have pads on, what should we do? What quick football drill, Ricardo, would you like to do to prove that Jimmy is a little bitch ass and oh that you're better? Oh my gosh, I feel like Jimmy's not a little bitch ass. He is. He is. <laughs> He is okay. Uh, what, what do you think? You're the, you're the, you guys are. This is your show. I know. Okay. So what do we want to do? Should we just do an old-fashioned? Yes. What are you saying? Oh, is, he needs his earpiece. Well, he didn't need oh, to hear okay. anything. No, you don't need it because. Uh... Oh yeah, take it off. No, no, you don't need it. Yeah, for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Jimmy. So I guess you guys are gonna do in a three-point stance when I say. Or how about? <laughs> or, or should we just do? Uh, um... What should we do, Ricardo? Because I don't want to make it, you know, I don't want you to get hurt. Like, what should we do? We have to do some football drill. Wait, what do you okay, think? one-on-one DB drill. Yes, that's smart. Okay. <laughs> yes, that's all smart. right. All right. All right. So okay. Okay. So you. So 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 you're the wide receiver. <laughs> Jimmy's the DB. You're the wide receiver. Okay. 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 We're gonna break something. Okay. If he catches this, Jimmy, you're a bitch ass and you're fired. Okay. So it's one-on-one. <laughs> No, shut up, Jimmy. Do not fake this, dude. You really cover him. Down, set, hut. Fever! Ah, you're fired! Yes, my dude. Give him the Shadour! Give him the Shadour! All right, folks. We end the show the same way every time. Everybody go follow No Femur Kid on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Yeah. Go, go follow him right now. We end the show the same way every time with a freestyle finale. DJ, hit that beat. No FEMA kid is on the blimp. You don't need a FEMA to be a pimp. You just go to the store and you eat some shrimp. I'm a pimp and I'm dancing and I'm prancing. Yes, I got a FEMA. Yes, they all long, but so is his dick. It's the size of King Kong, all right? I love you guys on Primetime 99. Like, subscribe, share it. I don't give a damn, but I'll see you guys tomorrow night.